Hello and welcome. This will be a short overview of My Robot Lab. So let's get started. First, what is My Robot Lab? My Robot Lab is an open source, service based Java framework for robotics and creative machine control. So, what the heck is that? Well, let's go over the parts. Open source. Okay, that means that you can check out the source, examine it in detail, learn how things work, and possibly even add your own parts. Java. Java is just a programming language, but I like it for several reasons. It's very structured, and there are a lot of amazing free editors for it. There is a vast amount of truly great open source Java projects available on the internet now, and it has the ability to run on many different platforms. Service-based framework. What does that mean? It means it does not do anything particularly interesting by itself, but contains a bunch of little blocks called services, which can be pretty fun to play with. <clears throat> if you imagine a little block that has input and output, the block by itself is not very useful or fun. However, if you have more than one block and can connect the blocks together, you can begin building much more complicated and exciting structures, like robots. So to recap, a framework is kind of boring until you begin building things in it. So let's get started. First, you'll need to get it. So where can you get my robot lab? Easy. Just search the web and you'll find the binaries and source posted on Google's code server. At any one time, there can be up to three downloads. The base install is the zip file, which starts myrobotlab-version.zip. The third party file is a collection of libraries for extended functionality. And the myrobotlab.jar is the latest release of the application without the installation material. To get started, just download the base install. In this case, myrobotlab-002.zip. Once you've downloaded the installation file, unzip it into a convenient location. The directory and file should look like this. myrobotlab.bat can be used to start the application on Windows machines. For OS X or Linux machines, use the myrobotlab.sh file. Within these files is a command line which starts the application. MyRobotLab is a Java application and it will require Java 1.5 or higher already to be installed. This command line starts two services, the invoker service and the GUI service. Each service must be uniquely named. In this case, the invoker service is named services and the GUI service is named GUI. Now I'll double click the SH file since I'm on a Linux machine. Hopefully the GUI service will appear. Remember the GUI service is not required for the running of my robot lab, but in this case it is one of the two services which were activated by the start script. The menu of the GUI service currently has a help about box. This will contain detailed information regarding the version you are using. You can find the number on Google's site and the items fixed within that revision. Now the tabs. The first tab is the communication tab. This allows one running instance of my robot lab to connect to another instance, even if they are running on different computers. When they are connected, they have the ability to share services with one another. I'll demonstrate that in a later tutorial. Next to the communication tab is the services tab. This is the GUI services window into the invoker service we launched on the command line. So let's take a peek. It has available services listed on the left. These are the blocks we can play with, kind of like a toy box. And on the right are the services currently running, or the blocks we are playing with now. The GUI service shows a map or representation of the current services in the system. So here are the two services again, in block form, each with its own inputs and outputs. You can grab them with a mouse and move them around, but what we'll want to do is connect them. I'll get to that a little later. Finally, we have the custom view. This is a blank tab. It is an empty area which allows docking of multiple service windows. Sometimes it's useful to look at more than one service window at once. This is done by clicking the X to remove the service from the tab form will appear on the custom tab. Clicking the X again will remove the widget from the custom tab and put it back into the tab form. Now it's time to connect a few simple services. Connecting the blocks. In this simple example I'll show you how to wire a clock service with a logging service and tie that to the GUI. 
The GUI is already loaded, but we'll need to start the other services. First, load a clock. This is a simple service which just sends out message events at a predetermined interval. Next, a logging service. This service will capture any message event in the framework. I'll move both service tabs to the custom view. Now switch over to the GUI map. You'll see some message routes already established between the GUI service and some of the other services. This is done automatically by the GUI. However, in this case, I will attach the clock's output to the logger. Clicking on the output gives a drop-down of possible events to route. The one I am interested in for this demo is the pulse event. I'll now route it to the log message input of the logging service. Now I'll switch over to the custom view and start the clock. Here are the messages being logged from the clock. The default settings of the clock will generate a pulse every second with no additional data. However, we can change the data being sent to a predefined numeric value or an incrementing one. The interval of the clock's pulses can be changed as well. We can even have the clock send some text. I guess this might be appropriate. Now let's add a few more parts for fun. With the third-party libraries loaded, the speech service also is available. I'll load one here. Now, going over to the GUI, now I'll direct the output of the clock to the input of the speech service. Now I'll start the clock, and the text will be directed to the speech input. Hello world, 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 hello world. Not quite right. Let's add some more parts. I'm going to add a new clock. Send it over to the custom view. And redirect the output of the second clock into the speech service too. Now I'll just change the text of the two clocks. Row, 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 down the stream. row, Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream.